Hello students. In the last video, we have seen the characteristics of animals. Already we have seen that every animal should be multicellular, that should be always have growth, metabolism, respiration, excretion, digestion, etc. Every animal should have the characteristics of locomotion as well as they need to have, they need to perform uh, the nervous control also. So this way they need to have all these characteristics. They are primary to each of them. Now in this animal kingdom itself we have seen that the phylum porifera I told and I mentioned in a uh, last video that the phylum porifera is the only porifera uh, only group of animal which have a very unique character that they do not show the characteristics two characteristics actually they are first one is their uh, senses or their consciousness or the nervous regulation so nervous regulation is absent in case of phylum porifera as well as they do not show locomotion or movement so in case of phylum porifera as they do not show the characteristics of consciousness or nervous regulation as well as their locomotion so that's why we are not able to call them that these animals are true animals so that's why they are uh, actually grouped in a different division from the rest of all of the animals so what is that first i told the animals the animal they are also known as metazoa so this metazoa this is actually a kingdom so this animal kingdom is divided into two sub kingdoms what are they first sub kingdom is parazoa and second sub kingdom is the eumetazoa so what are these two animal two groups two divisions of animals that in case of parazoa para means primitive Para means primitive and zoa means animal. So these are the primitive animals and you, you, this word, remember, these are true, metazoa means animals. So in case of the metazoa, as these are the animals, these are grouped into two subdivisions. What are those? The first one, they are parazoans, first group of animal, which are uh, one phylum actually. This phylum is the phylum porifera. So in case of phylum porifera, it do not show locomotion. And second, in case of this group of animal, they don't have consciousness. So this is a very important characteristics in case of animals that in case of phylum porifera they do not show the locomotion and consciousness but the rest of all of the other animals that means the phylum right from the phylum cylinderata up to the phylum cordata all of these animals they are the true animals they are the complete characteristics they have all of the characteristics of a true animal so these are the two divisions now just see first of all we have this basis depending upon what we have separated the porifera now just see in this whole uh, world in all the uh, different habitats like in the sea water in the aquatic condition uh, marine as well as the freshwater conditions as well as in the terrestrial condition in any form as well as in the arboreal condition or in the aerial habitat we have seen numbers of organisms see in the whole biodiversity we are going to have around 1.7 to 1.8 millions of living being so from this organisms around 1.2 millions of organisms they are animals see these are huge group of uh, group actually that from that 1.7 to 1.8 millions of species there are around 1.2 millions which are the animals and remaining only 0.5 millions of living organisms they are plants 
So we have numbers of other organisms also like microbes, different type of microbes are also there. But here we have divided these animals, C, from all these living animals around 1.7 to 1.8 millions. There are around 1.2 millions of animals. Now, in this first year, the first chapter, you have to study all this 1.2 millions of animals. Is it possible to study all this 1.2 millions of species one after one? In one uh, year even, if you study all these animals one by one also, it is not possible that you can complete in your whole life. So that's why we have to group all these animals. And whenever we group all these animals that need uh, to have some basis. What are those bases? Suppose, just take one example, we have a basket and in that basket we have uh, two colored of vegetable, one is green, another is yellow. Suppose we have to separate this and uh, suppose vegetables, then we will separate green vegetables separately in a different basket and suppose yellow in a different. So this color, green and yellow, that is actually one uh, basis depending upon what we have uh, separated the vegetables. Similarly, to separate all this 1.2 millions of animals, we need to have some basis depending upon what we will divide those animals so that uh, for our easy study actually, we have divided all these animals. So what is that? This is actually basis. So depending upon what we will group, divide these animals in different groups. So what is that? This is the basis of classification. So let's just start with all this basis of classification now. Now let's just see the different basis of classification. So the first basis of classification is the level of organization. So what is level of organization? The level of organization means their body is made up of what? C level of organization means their arrangement of the body parts. C what happened in different group of animals? In different group of animals, their body is uh, going to have uh, either cells. Those cells are arranged in a specific manner so that they can form the tissues. Then numbers of tissues, they will start to perform a specific function. These are known as organ and a number of organs, they perform only one function that is known as organ system. Now to see what happened, in case of the first uh, group of animals, this is the phylum Porifera, this phylum Porifera have cells in their body. This organism have some loosely aggregated cells, that means these organisms have only cells in their body. Second thing, see what happens in case of phylum Porifera that each and every cell as they are loosely aggregated, each cell have to perform their function. Each cell are performing digestion, respiration, circulation separately. But what happened in case of that animal, whenever they perform all the functions, none of the functions can be specific. So that's why in case of phylum porifera, each cell, they're not having any coordination among themselves. Every cell as they have to perform all the functions, they're not specific in any of the function. So that's why what happened, they start to have some type of problems, this problem. That's why what happened in case of uh, the different group of animals, that means every time, time after time, the organisms, the animals start to evolve. So what happened to the next group of animals? They fill uh, the phylum porifera, they have this type of problem that each cell have to perform all the functions and that's why they are not coordinated also and that's why lots of cells are not able to perform if suppose some function the cells die. So that's why this organism is actually not a complete uh, stable uh, organ organism actually. So that's why what happened? Some of the cells, they start to coordinate it in between themselves. And that's after that, they perform some specific function. And as some of the cells are performing some specific function, they become more and more specialized. So that's why what happened in case of the next phylum, that is in the phylum cylinder, and Tinophora, what happened to them that in case of this group of animal, they 
have some another composition their arrangement their body have tissue grade of organization that means now this phylum cylindrata is going to have some tissues in their body that means the cells are aggregated and all the cells suppose some of the cells are aggregated to perform uh, only one function like digestion some of the cells are aggregated to function only suppose respiration some of the cells are aggregated to perform only reproduction so that become more specialized in that function too and each of them they actually help the other tissues also so this way what happened the organism become more and more specialized so what happened later so just see in the tissue organization also number of problems start to arise they become not complex now so as the environment get more and more complex the organism also have to adapt themselves in that environment so gradually what happened those tissues start to form organs now organ become their body organ that organs start to form their uh, body gradually the organs also numbers of organs they uh, start to coordinate in between themselves and after that they form the organ system so this way actually numbers of uh, organization had developed so what is that this is the first basis of classification that is the first level of organization so how many level of organization you have seen the first level of organization is cellular where the body is made up of only loosely aggregated cell second one this is the tissue level of organization where the cells are aggregated to perform a specific function that is known as tissue level of organization next one we have seen that the tissues are also start to form some organ and become more specific in that function that is known as organ system of organization and this way in the last most complex organisms start to develop organ system level of classification so in that organ system level of classification what happened to them they have numbers of system and all the system are coordinated in such a way that it actually start to develop a system like just see uh, one uh, very easy uh, already you have studied then digestive system digestive system is made up of numbers of organ like the buccal cavity buccal cavity is one organ then after that we have the food pipe or that uh, esophagus this is the second organ then after that stomach it's the third organ intestine fourth organ liver pancreas all of them they actually are different different organs all of these organs are coordinated that means one after that synchronizationally they are performing uh, only one function that is to perform only digestion so just see what happened whenever the organism become more and more specialized they actually develop some system and those system are formed by organs so numbers of organs they found and they start to form all this organ system and this way the most complex organism came to exist that is in case of if you take your example only suppose in case of human human have digestive system respiratory system all this system are formed of numbers of organ so that is the last basis of classification that is the organ system level of organization so let's just see what is that first of all the different basis of classification so what are the basis of classification first one first we have to see that is the level of organization so level of organization means their arrangement of body so in the arrangement of body that means their body is made up of what first of all we have the first level of organization that is cellular level of organization cellular level of organization means they have some cells you just see the example first example the sponges already we know the sofa set the uh, different cushions they are made up of this uh, uh, that cushion like substance that is the spoons so spoons is nothing but a living organism so you can see suppose this is a spoons and in case of that spoons they are going to have some cells so those cells they are loosely aggregated yes they are forming one organism but these cells are 
loosely aggregated. Each of the cells, each of them have to perform all the functions. Suppose you take this example, this cell have to perform digestion, this cell have to perform respiration, this cell have to perform excretion. Similarly, the another cell also have to function all of this function, the same function, but each of them have to perform all the functions separately. So this is what this is a cellular grade of organization where the cell is the main component which form the body. So in that cellular grade of organization, we have the phylum. That phylum is the most simplest animal, simplest group of animal that is the phylum porifera. Now just see where just cells are loosely aggregated. Loser, uh, cells are only loosely aggregated. So these are the cellular grade of organization. Second, the next grade of organization, C, this is the tissue grade of organization. Now, what is tissue grade of organization? See what happened to this group of animal that in case of this, the cells, suppose these are the cells, these cells are aggregated and it is performing only one function, suppose digestion. Now, some another cells, suppose these are the group of another cells. Now, these cells will perform only respiration. Suppose the another uh, group of cells, just take this example. Uh, this is another group of cells and those cells are performing only excretion. Now, all of these cells, they are performing one specific function by forming some groups. What is that? This is forming one organism, suppose. Then this is this will be the next uh, basis of classification that uh, that is uh, under the basis of classification that the tissue grade of organization. So what is tissue grade of organization? That the cells are now start to coordinate it for some tissue. So how many organisms are under that tissue grade of organization? See, we have two phylums here. The phylum is cylindrata. Now just remember what is this porifera cylindrata as just terms. Later on we'll see what is porifera, what is cylindrata, from where these terms are coming. We will break all this term and we'll understand what is that actually. So just before that, just remember as it is. So just see phylum cylindrata and the tinophora. This two group of animals, they are the tissue grade of organization. They are going to have the tissue grade of organization where the cells are functioning some specific function. So this is the tissue grade of organization. Next grade of organization, see what is the next grade of organization that is organ level of organization in that organ level of organization see what happened to this group of animal suppose i'm giving you an example that is a liver fluke so in case of them what happened they're going to have some organs only one organ perform only one function so this type of organization this is known as the organ level of organization so what is that phylum only one phylum is here that is in case of phylum platyhelminths. So in case of phylum platyhelminths, you will see the organ system, organ level of organization. The last level of organization, what is that? The last level of organization is the organ system level of organization. So in the organ system level of organization, what is present? See now. First of all, in that organ system, as the name suggests, understood that in case of them, they're going to have numbers of organs. Just take one example. Let me draw the digestive system of human itself. If you see the human digestive system, first of all, we'll have the mouth. Then after that, this region is pharynx. After that, we will have the esophagus. Then from the esophagus, we have the stomach, then duodenum. Then after that, we're going to have the intestine here this is small intestine this is the large intestine here we have the liver here we have the stomach all of them they're performing only one function 
what is the digestion only so what happened to them that in case of organ system level of organization this level of organization have numbers of organs and all these organs will coordinate it with each other and after that it is performing only one function so that is known as the organ system level of organization so what is that phylum see in that we are going to have after platyhel means the next uh, phylum is Ascalmentis, Ascalmentis up to, up to the Chordata, all of these animals are going to have the organ system level of organization. So this is all about the first basis of classification that is the level of organization. Now just see the second basis of classification that is body symmetry. Now what is symmetry? See, first of all, in case of animals, if you see just the animals around you, that uh, all these animals will have different shapes, size and morphology. Morphology is actually the term we use to uh, show actually their body structure. Out, uh, the outermost uh, structure, how it look like, that is the morphology. So what happened to the animals that each and every animal are going to be different from each other? So what happened? Uh, first of all, we'll see that this animal can it be divided into two equal halves or how we can have two exactly same plane. If we divide this animal, then how many planes we can able to get or in how many planes we can able to divide the animal so that you can have two equal halves. So that is symmetry. So just see, first of all, I will tell you what is symmetry now. So second basis of classification is the body symmetry. So just see in that body symmetry, how we can able to divide. We have to know two terms. One is axis, another is plane. So what is axis and what is plane? First of all, you have to take one example. Suppose this is a species. Now you need to have an imaginary straight line passing through the midpoint of the species. Suppose this is the midpoint of the species and you have to draw a straight line passing through that midpoint. That means it may be like this, it may be like this. So this will be an axis, this will be an axis, this is another axis. So this will be the axis of the organism. That means it is the plane, uh, this is the straight line. This is the straight line passing through, passing through the midpoint, passing through the midpoint. This is the axis. Second thing, just see in that uh, another case that in the body symmetry, we need to have some planes. That means now you have to see, suppose this is one organism. Now, how many planes you can have? Suppose you have divided the animals like this then what you will get we will have two uh, planes that means uh, vertically you will have two halves and if you see suppose this animal this is suppose the animal and now you have to divide in a horizontal manner so suppose you have drawn one axis and after that you get two equal halves then this is this will be the horizontal plane then after that this will be the vertical plane so this will be the vertical plane and this will be horizontal plane. So what is that? We will have axis and we will have plane. So in that body symmetry, we will see how you can able to divide all these animals. So just see what happened to the animals. First of all, some of the animals, uh, they even cannot be divided into two equal halves. And if you cannot divide the animal into two equal half, then it will be known as asymmetrical type of animal. See, first of all, what are those asymmetrical type of animal? Asymmetrical type of animal means this animal, suppose uh, this is one example I can give you. This is a animal of the phylum Porifera itself. This is Ponzilla. Remember, this name is very much important. 
this ponzilla is actually one species which is the only free living uh, sorry uh, fresh water organism that means it lives only in the fresh water otherwise in case of phylum porifera all of the other organisms are marine they live in the seas or oceans they're living uh, in a marine condition except one animal that is sponzilla sponzilla is the only porifern which live in the fresh water so uh, if you see this animal first of all you need to have the point like this exactly in the mid region so this is the midpoint after that try to divide the animal so suppose you have tried this axis is it possible you can get two equal halves see this half is different this half is different so you will not get the two equal plane suppose you have drawn this way this is another axis you will not get the two equal size or equal plane so this way in any plane if you try then you will not get the exactly two equal halves what are they they are the asymmetrical type of animal where after this axis you are not going to get the two exactly same plane so this is this type of basis of classification this is symmetry the first one is asymmetrical type of animal so what are they the phylum porifera actually in the phylum porifera the organisms are asymmetrical in nature but remember we have one uh, group actually this is one class in the phylum porifera that is calcarea see in case of the phylum calca uh, in the phylum porifera the class cal calcarea this organisms have the radial symmetry we'll see what is radial symmetry now just see what is radial symmetry so first of all see we have drawn one species okay so first of all if you have this species first of all you need to draw the point of symmetry so this midpoint you have drawn then after that you drawn a uh, axis then after that if you try to divide then you will get a numbers of planes you will sorry this is the plane so this way you will get the numbers of radius and in every plane we will get two equal halves so a numbers of imaginary axis can be possible just like through this midpoint you will have numbers of radius like that and you will get two exactly equal halves so basically the uh, round spherical the round type of animals these organisms they are going to have radial symmetry so what are they so we have two groups of animals now so the phylum silenterata tinophora and another we have the phylum echinodermata so in case of phylum echinodermata they are going to have radial symmetry that means uh, in radial uh, in the axis if you draw passing through this animal then you will get the exactly two planes see uh, i can give you another example that is a starfish so starfish all of us we have no uh, we already know what is that starfish so passing through this point first of all you have to divide like this first of all you have to draw midpoint then try to divide you will get two equal half you will get two equal half so what is that this is going to be the radial symmetry then after that we are going to have the last uh, uh, plane the last basis of classification in body symmetry that is bilateral type of symmetry now what is bilateral type of symmetry c passing through this midpoint you can have only one axis one imaginary axis is only possible it may be either longitudinal it can be transverse but only one plane can be possible so just see suppose you have taken the example of a butterfly so suppose this is one organism uh, you can take another example suppose this is a locust so what happen in case of this animals first of all you have to draw this midpoint exactly in the middle of the organism in the middle then after that passing through this midpoint you have to draw a uh, uh, axis imaginary axis like this you have to draw only that axis see if you try to draw this axis is it possible you can have two equal halves no because in this half there is no head and this has there uh, this half there is no anus so that's why what you can able to have 
passing through this midpoint only one imaginary axis is only possible even the human we have one this axis that means uh, if you have this vertical plane this vertical axis you will have two exactly halves so what is that this is the bilateral type of symmetry so how many animals are here the phylum platyhelminths up to chordata of course there are numbers of exceptions we have you can see this is one exception that echinodermata this is actually within this group uh, we have numbers of animals that phylum platyhelminths up to chordata except this phylum echinodermata that is only the uh, the adult one they are going to be uh, bilateral so what happens see first of all we have seen the asymmetrical type of body symmetry that means this organism are not going to have any plane we are not able to divide the animal into two halves what is that these are asymmetrical what is that phylum porifera see this phylum porifera are asymmetrical except there is an exception that is calcarea see exceptions are very much important in uh, exams basically in this chapter questions are asked from the exception remember those exceptions those are very very much going to be important so you can see the next one that is radial type of symmetry where the uh, passing through this midpoint a numbers of uh, imaginary axis you can draw and this will be like the radius so what is that? That is the radial type of symmetry, the phylum cylindrata, tinophora, and echinodermata. This is one organism, this is another organism. These are going to be radial symmetry. And after that, we are going to have the last one that is bilateral. In this bilateral symmetry, you are going to have uh, only one imaginary axis that is passing through this midpoint is possible that may be transverse this can be longitudinal any but you can have only two equal halves only from one axis there are no two axis in the same spaces is possible suppose you have drawn this butterfly this transverse axis if you have drawn you will not get two halves so what is that this is bilateral uh, type of symmetry from platyhelminths you can have platyhelminths then ascalminthes then annelida arthropoda mollusca then the chordata this group of animals they're going to be bilateral so this is the second level of symmetry uh, second basis of classification that is level of uh, level of uh, that is body symmetry so we have seen the two basis of classification one is level of organization second one is the body symmetry so these are the two basis of classification in the next video we'll see the another basis of classification thank you